Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is my Prusa XL. In this video, I'm gonna be upgrading this from the two tool head to the full five tool heads. I uh, just got the shipment in earlier this week. So we've got the three extra tool heads plus the electronics and accessories that go with it. So I'm gonna kind of give you a better detailed view of what it's like to actually install these, calibrate it, all that good stuff. And before we go any further, I bought all of this stuff. Prusa is not involved in this video in any way whatsoever. So let's start out by looking what comes in this upgrade kit. So if you go on Prusa's website, they don't necessarily sell the individual extruders. They kind of sell these as upgrade packs. So you have like a one to five and a two to five and things like that. I guess in theory, you could add just an extruder, but there's some other pieces that are needed. So for instance, I got the two to five upgrade. So I got three of the extruders and it also comes with this XL electronic expansion pack. So if we take a look inside this, we can see that it comes with a new power supply. You can see right here, there's a space for another power supply. That's to power the extra extruders. Um, we have like one of these, you know, rails for that. Got some other, you know, various pieces. Um, we have a filament run out sensor. This will go on the other side for the additional spools. And then we have um, this little guy, which is kind of a expansion board for the extra power. And then kind of an interesting thing is it comes with um, two extra 0.4 millimeter nozzles. And I think the idea here is that like me, I ordered this in the very beginning. It came with a 0.6 millimeter. So this allows you to upgrade the existing nozzles to the 0.4 millimeter, which is kind of a nice little touch. I've already done that, but it's kind of an admission that they want everyone to be using the 0.4 millimeter. And then I think the last thing in here is just kind of the extra wiring and all that. And of course, like Prusa, it's all very well labeled and laid out. And then if we look inside these other boxes, these are just the standard extruders, um, pretty much the same thing that you got with the original XL. Um, we have the actual extruder itself or the tool head, if you will, and we've got that. Um, we've got the spool holder and then the wiring loom. So this is all kind of built together with the um, Bowden tubes in it. And then we also have kind of the docking cradle for the tool head itself. So yeah, let's go ahead and um, get all this put together. As with pretty much all Prusa products, the instructions are very, very good. It comes with a little slip of paper that um, directs you to a link online, and it has full step-by-step -step instructions, which, if anything, are way too detailed. You know, like one step will be grab a screw, move on to the next step. But if you've ever done anything with Prusa, this is no different than any of their other instructions. So the first thing that we need to do with this is kind of install the power supply and the electronic stuff. Now they're gonna have you disassemble a lot and I kind of ignored some of these instructions because it wants you to completely disassemble the extruders. And you can kind of see I'm doing that, but then I kind of stopped halfway through because I really don't want to unscrew these off of the rail and um, take off the docks and take this completely apart and then put it back on. I don't know if this is gonna bite me later, I'll let you know. I think it's just to get more clearance and more accessibility into the electronics, but I'm gonna keep these on for right now. So if you're seeing a difference in what I'm doing versus what the instructions are saying, that's, that's what it is. I'm keeping everything connected for right now because I really just don't wanna take all of the existing tool heads off. So now that we have everything kind of disassembled and opened up, it's time to install the third power supply. If you've never really seen the back of an XL, this kind of shows you just how much redundancy and how much, I don't know, stuff there is. And I know everyone's favorite topic is the price of the XL. And this kind of gives you a little idea of where some of that money is. You have three full power supplies. Uh, most printers are gonna have, you know, one, and this has three of them. And I'm not 100% sure if this is absolutely necessary. I'm sure Prusa figured this out and realized that they need three of them. But when you have five full tool heads that are up to temperature, 
you know, you have a lot of power requirements in addition to the massive bed and the electronics and everything else. So there might be a very good reason for this, but to upgrade from the two tool head to the five tool head, we need to add this third power supply, which fits in this little middle section. There's a lot of really cool design details in the XL, and I think how the power supplies kind of fit onto this back panel is definitely one of them. You just kind of have these slots or modules. There's kind of like a power distribution at the bottom, and then the power supplies just kind of um, click into these little bays, if you will. And it fits in there really nicely, and everything worked out well. I followed the instructions, and um, yeah, everything just kind of fits together really nice. And the finishing pieces that you kind of put on trims it out, and it just looks like one nice solid piece when you're done. I mean, you know, this is kind of what Prusa is good at, is this kind of um, industrial kit design, if you will. Um, their stuff kind of looks more like really, really well-polished kits than it does something more like the bamboo, which is kind of more of a very polished commercial product. Um, but in any event, this went together really nicely. So now that the power supply is installed, we just need to add that little expansion board into the main controller board. And from what I can tell, the power supply goes into this, and that is going to feed the power to the actual tool heads. And of course, it expands into that little expansion port, which is kind of cool. The wire maintenance on this isn't too bad. It really wasn't that fiddly kind of routing everything and getting things plugged in. I think screwing down the power supply connectors was the worst part, but eh, it wasn't too bad. And so far, those extra extruders have not been in the way. They're just kind of a little bit in the way, but there really hasn't been that big of a deal. I didn't say this in the beginning, but the installation is kind of a two-part process. You have the power supply and all that stuff that you just saw, and then the second part is the actual tool head installation. Up until now, I'm about 30 minutes into it. So really, this is only about a half an hour to get to where I'm at now, which isn't too bad. When I remembered that they had the power supply and all the other stuff, I thought this was gonna be a huge ordeal, but so far it's not too bad. I've done the tool heads before, so we'll see how long that takes for the extra three. But yeah, let's go ahead and get those installed. So Prusa mentions this in the beginning of their instructions, but I kind of forgot to mention it. You're going to want to have the printer in a place that you can access all sides. Whether you spin it around or just have a table that you can kind of get around to all sides, you're going to need to access it from the front, back, side, top, everything. So make sure you keep that in mind before you start doing this build. Installing the actual extruders is pretty easy. You just basically have these docks that you screw into the back. I didn't have to adjust the spacing of anything um, from the two tool head. Everything was in the exact same spot, so I didn't have to undo or readjust anything. It was just a matter of screwing on the extra three. Now, this is something that I've brought up before in other videos and comments and stuff. These things need to be secured very, very well. And Prusa's actually done a better job of being explicit with this. But if there's any wobble or any movement in these, you've done it wrong. They fit very, very tightly. And you kind of like really hurt your hands with that Allen key getting these screwed in there. So you kind of have to wiggle them and wobble them as you're screwing it in. Make sure you don't strip it. This is kind of one of my biggest issues with the Prusa XL is they kind of have this thin nut strip um, on the inside of that extrusion, and that's what you're screwing into. But it really only has like a couple threads, so it is very easy to either cross-thread it or over-tighten it and strip it out. So just be really mindful of this. Um, don't really use too much mechanical advantage here. I'm using one of these long, skinny um, Allen keys, and I really can't get that much leverage on it. So it's just kind of a matter of wiggling it while you're tightening it, and it eventually will kind of seat into that extrusion, and then it will feel solid, and then just tighten it as much as you feel comfortable with without using any mechanical advantage, or else you're just going to strip it out. So now that the docks are physically connected onto the back of the machine, now we can kind of start routing everything and putting on the actual extruders. Uh, we can plug in the Bowden tubes into the filament sensors, and then we're going to plug in the end of the cable into the controller. And this is pretty clearly laid out. The first two go kind of in this top location, and then the other three go on that expansion board that we plugged in earlier. And it's all very easily laid out in the instructions. 
Once that's all kind of done, now we can actually put on the tool heads onto the little magnetic posts and plug in the um, Bowden tube and then put in the cable in the top. And you need to make sure that these are arranged really nicely because if they're not arranged well, then they're gonna kind of um, snag on each other and bunch. They need to kind of be perfectly vertically aligned. And then we just kind of um, have this little plastic piece that screws into the front and secures that cable loom. And then we're all good to go and then just a couple other little steps that are in the instructions. But after all this is done now, we can go on to actually calibrating these and getting all the offsets and all that good stuff done. So I got all the tool heads installed and that took, I don't know, about a half an hour, maybe 20 to 30 minutes. That really wasn't too bad. I think the calibration is gonna take a little bit longer just because it takes time and there might be a little adjusting here and there. We're going to go ahead and turn this on for the very first time and it should prompt us with a little wizard on here to go through and start calibrating everything. So let's see what happens. Okay, so please calibrate. Now it was supposed to go directly to the menu, but we can go into control and calibration down here. All that's good. And then we can start doing the dock positioning calibration. So. I'm gonna redo all the calibrations though because um, we did kind of fiddle with these. So now yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So I went into a little bit of detail on this in my first video, but essentially what you're doing is loosening the dock with the head and then kind of manually positioning it and then locking it in place. So that's what we're gonna do um, for this procedure. The wizard walks you through this step by step, so it's pretty easy, but the very first time I did this, I was a little bit confused. Essentially what you're doing is completely removing those locating pins, setting those aside, and then loosening the dock so it's just really floppy and compliant. Then you just manually grab the gantry, move it in front of the tool, lock it in place manually by hand, and then you snug everything down. Then it will take the tool off home, do everything, then you finish tightening it down, put those um, locating pins back in, and then it's all nice and calibrated and aligned. And I've seen a few people online have some issues with this. You kind of got to be a little gentle when you're um, doing this whole process, because if you kind of like, you know, tighten something down and move it a little bit, it'll be out of place. You got to be a little bit gentle and make sure that when you manually locked it into the tool head, it doesn't move once you then tighten everything down. It has to be perfectly aligned and you can kind of do this as a trial and error. Um, it needs to be very, very smooth. When it goes to grab the tool and pick it up, the only thing you should hear is the little click of those locking pins. If it rubs against the pins or if it rubs in any area or if it grabs it slightly at an angle and then it kind of pops in place, all of those things are wrong. It needs to not touch anything and not rub against anything. Just dock in, lock, and pull it away without interference whatsoever. Off camera, I did the filament sensor and load cell checks, and now it's time to move on to the last and final step, which is the nozzle offset compensation. Basically, each one of the nozzles is in a slightly different place, so we need to pick a relative point on the bed. Thankfully, there's this little pin that you can install, and we're going to use the nozzles to probe around that little pin, and that will tell the machine the slight offset for each one of the nozzles. This is pretty important because if you are using one filament and then switch the tool head and use a second filament, if there's a small offset, you're absolutely going to see it, so this will calibrate that offset and it's a pretty slick little process it takes and yeah, maybe about 15 minutes total for all five of these but it basically goes and probes the top of the pin and then all the way around the pin and then just moves on to the next tool head and does it one by one all five of them pretty cool process so I think I've got everything assembled. All of the self checks and diagnostics and calibrations are done. I've got five different filaments loaded up. So now it's time to do a test print. I was gonna do something kind of crazy for this first test, but 
I'm just going to test it out with five different color filaments and see if everything's calibrated, lined up, all that good stuff. I do have plans in my next video to do kind of a um, showcase of what this thing can do. I want to combine TPU, carbon fiber, glow in the dark, PETG, PLA as supports, all that crazy stuff. I want to kind of show off what this thing can do with the full five extruders, but it's going to take me a little bit of time to design such a part and go through that. So. For this, I'm just going to show it printing five different colors, which is nothing too fantastic, but I just want to get this thing running. So let's go and do exactly that. So while this prints, let's talk about everyone's favorite XL topic price. How much did it cost to go from the two to the five tool heads? So the upgrades come in a couple different flavors. You can get them with or without tools. You can save a little bit of money and they don't include like the Allen key and Torx driver and stuff like that. I, of course, opted to not get the tools. So that was like 1120 US dollars. Then there was the shipping on top of that, which was like 45 from DHL. And then there was, um, I think it was like $52 in import duties. So altogether, it was a little over $1,200 or about $400 per extruder, which is crazy. However, Hopefully this will do things that no other printer will be able to do, so the cost can be you know, justified. I'm doing air quotes here. Check out my previous video for my discussion about this. But it is expensive, um, about $400 per extruder extra. Obviously we're kind of wrapping in the power supply and everything like that, but that's what it ended up costing. But hopefully, hopefully this will end up doing some really amazing things. Okay, so it just finished. Everything looks good. There's um, a tiny little string right there, prime tower stayed put, and there's really no gaps or no issues. So yeah, I think everything printed out just fine. I think we're all calibrated, and now we can move on to something a lot more complicated. And yeah, there's the waste, just a little bit, just a few grams. And on the next print, I am going to try printing no prime tower. You can just print directly in um, the infill, so I'm going to try that on the next one. But yeah, everything looks good. Let me pop this off. So it stayed together, and that is the bottom layer. You can see it's all nice and crisp. I know this is nothing like super impressive because a lot of other printers can do this, but I'm just showing that this is um, calibrated. I don't really have to mess with it that much. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Now I got to do something a little bit more challenging. So as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video and let's uh, do something really crazy with this thing.